Hey guys, welcome to another Train Some Classic video. Today we got some more stuff released on the Steam Store by Developers Union Workshop. And some very nice looking stuff for the land of the rising sun. This is what they call Tokyo Commuter, Kain to Tohoku, and Utsimo Mia lines. I'm, I'm gonna mess up my Japanese is shit. It's just, it's just the way it is. It's a new route from uh, Union Workshop. The last thing they released, I think, was the uh, Tohoku, uh, which actually is the to Tohoku line is actually right next to where we're at currently. But uh, the Shikansen uh, route that came out last, that was from Union Workshop, the same folks that made this, and they've made a ton uh, of stuff over the years, uh, namely for Japan, which is very nice. It's always nice to see... Japanese trains in train sim. They're cool as hell. I really, really like them. Uh, it's just neat. They're, they're narrow gauge commuter stuff. They're, of course, you know, they're bullet trains. Everything. It's just really cool stuff. In Japan, it just it looks insane. It looks awesome. I've never been. I'd love to go. But uh, it just looks really neat. Anyway, this is now available on the Steam Store, and it's only 30 bucks. I don't know what that translates to in, uh, in your monies in your country, but if you're in the U.S., this one's only 30 bucks this time. It's going to come with the E233, which I have both of laying here, uh, in the 1000 series and the 3000 series. Uh, and they, they actually differentiate between the two. It's not just a paint job. Uh, one of the things you can notice right off the bat is there is no JR branding on the front of the train. Sadly, uh, they can't do anything about that due to legal reasons. Otherwise, they'd get sued or they'd have to take it down, cease and desist, all that good stuff. Uh, so the, they're not there, obviously. Um, it's not the end of the world. You don't really notice it because it's not like a huge logo. I mean, the trains look how they look uh irl for the most part but uh, these things do look very nice um anyway the 1000 series is a 10 car set which is the kahin uh tohoku which is the blue one so that's your 1000 series on the left the 3000 series is the one on the right it's a five and a 10 car and that's the utsunomiya uh, line. So it's two different lines technically, and one's kind of an express train and one's not. And that's the emerald green one and gold or yellow or whatever the hell that is on the right. Obviously, the lines run north to south out of Tokyo, or north from Tokyo, the the almost smack dab city center of Tokyo. It's uh, it's Chungus around there. It is Tokyo, after all. Um, but uh, the the Kahin to Tohoku line opened in 1914, so it's been around a very long time. And the Utsu line, I'll just say Utsu uh, for short, which parallels it, was built in the friggin' 1800s. I want to say like late 18-something, so it's even older. And uh, there's just a myriad of spaghetti rails all over Tokyo and just in, you know, greater Japan, metro Japan uh, overall, which is just nuts, but we're going to take a look at the uh, trains here. So these are essentially built off the same uh, electric multiple unit. They're kind of the same train, one of the same. It's the E233 series, which is a commuter EMU, obviously, uh, developed by JR East, or Japan Railway. Um, they were derived from the earlier 231 and 531 series. Uh, they came after those, and they first ran, I think, in the early 2000s, or I want to say 2005, 2006, something like that. Uh, although the 1000 series was introduced in about 07, uh, as well as the 3000 series, of course, a little bit later on. Uh, over 3,000 units were built over all of these uh, variants here, and they have the, the very cool stainless steel car bodies. Uh, kind of like your uh, your Amer your American um, you know M3s M7s all that good stuff, uh, but they uh, they have a top speed on average of uh, I think about 75 mile an hour, uh, and they run on 1500 volt direct current. Uh, they have safety systems which are within the game, uh, which include ATSP, um, ATS, SN, ATC. Um, I think I got those right. And they are, of course, narrow gauge. So that's what's cool about uh, Japan Rail and the stuff, you know, that runs through, uh, well, greater Tokyo. It's narrow foot gauge, three foot, six inch. 
known in Japan as Kiyoki, which essentially is translated uh, to Narragage. But, um, yeah, these these were also the first, jeez, uh, I think they were the first Japanese EMUs um, that had, uh, that had, like, colorful LED in the, um, something to do with, like, the screens, uh, you know, the passenger information system and stuff like that. So they were kind of uh, the first of their kind when they came out um, with the destination boards, the LCD, uh, LCD displays, and uh, I think they had auto announcements as well, which I think some of the scenarios have auto announcements. But anyway, the blue ones on the right, the 1000 series, had 83 sets built in 10 car sets. Uh, the green and gold on the left, which is the 3000 series, had 524 or 25 cars built, five something, uh, with five to ten car sets, and they uh, they got these unique bi-level cars, which are first class cars within the set. So we'll go over here and take a peek at that real quick. So these look very cool. So it's like a little double deckered uh, portion. Of uh, of these trains, which is just jammed in the middle of the uh, 3000 series, it's kind of funky looking. I like it. It is very neat. Um, they're supposed to be very uh, comfortable cars as well. So this is our map, uh, and do not be confused. It's basically everything uh, on the bottom here, uh, which runs right up, and it's actually both lines. So the lines parallel. The uh, the Kaihin Tohoku. Uh, connects uh, Saitama, Kawaguchi, um, Tokyo, Kawasaki, and Yokohama. Uh, and it's got, I think, about 36 stations overall. And it's got a train depot up at Saitama, which is right about where we were just a minute ago looking at the trains. Uh, the line opened in 1914, like I said earlier, and it's about 37 miles long. So that's about the length of the route. While that may sound short, it's not really uh, considering it's mainly commuter. If you do an express run, sure, it's A to B. Um, but uh, there, there are several stations that you're going to stop at and quite a bit of traffic. And the average speed is about 55 mile an hour, whatever the hell that translates to, into the metric system. Uh, but the trains are fairly often. They run every three minutes or so, uh, peak, and then I think uh, five, six minutes daytime holidays, all that good stuff. Now, the line that parallels it, the, I'm going to say Utsu instead of the entire name, instead of butchering it, is a 100-mile section of the Tohoku main line uh, between 34 stations, which is Tokyo Station, uh, Kurioso, and Nashashasha, Nashusha, freaking A, I don't know it, and Togochi. We'll just leave it there. That line opened in the late 1800s, so it's very old, and that has a max speed or average speed of 75 mile an hour. And the uh, train depot for that line is the Oyama. Um, let's see, what else? I'm trying to try to condense everything into one just to give you a little, a little, uh, you know, nugget of information about the area, just in case you were not aware. Uh, there's roughly like three separate types of services. So there's like a limited express, uh, locals, and rapid services. Um, and I, I think that should just about cover it. But this is this is Tokyo, guys. This is friggin' like downtown Metro Tokyo, right? Chow. This is Ueno, uh, very friggin' big station. You've got uh, the uh, Shinkansen yard here, uh, Tabata, and then the uh, the depot for the other lines, uh, which is Oku, and then um, and then it runs north up here, which is where we were just at just a moment ago. So while we're at it, before we start looking at the other two, there's actually a third train. Sadly, it is currently AI only, and in the manual, which is very in-depth, uh, it notates that they plan to build an expansion upon, because there's essentially part of another whole line that can be ran, or loop, if you will, which this would and kind of does run... Um, within the game so this thing here is ai only sadly this of course is the 231 500 series uh for the yamato line and uh, it says the expansion's coming so who knows about that um you know of course only the devs do but there is a very large manual that comes with the route which you can actually look at on steam without even having to purchase the route uh, if you'd like to take a look around and it is extremely in-depth it goes over all the systems uh all your signaling all the train controls, 
uh, where you're at, what kinds of lines these are. It explains the, uh, the multiple units very well. It goes into very, very much detail. And uh, it, is, it is supremely helpful, especially with the safety systems and signaling and things like that. Uh, it also notates that this is a fairly heavy uh, add-on. This is a fairly heavy route. And we've seen some of these over the years which just tank frame rates. And uh, it, this one is not the best. Not going to lie. I'm going to just go ahead and throw it out there. I had a mess around just to see what the frames were like before I started the video because I won't name the root, but old shiny boy had his heart broken with uh, a one American commuter route last year by not testing scenarios or anything else and just looking in the editor. And it, uh, it, was, a, it was a shock when it came down to like actually playing. It sucked. It was horrible. They're supposed to update it with a patch with this new, you know, train sim core update that's coming you know whatever the hell who knows i don't even know what's going on with that we'll see but anyway so it, it doesn't run that great but it doesn't run terribly either so right now i've got my steam overlay uh, fps counter if you can see in the top left it's flirting at about 20 fps now with that being said i have got the maximum aliasing within the game settings on and turned up uh, I've got Railworks Enhancer going with all kinds of little things there, although that doesn't really tank performance at all. Um, but there are some areas within this route which are very, very heavy. Uh, most notably, Ueno, which is uh, basically, you know, Tokyo Station right down Chow. This place is a nightmare. I kind of don't even want to go down there. Um, you know, they, they note in the manual that if if you're having a, a bad time with frame rate, uh, just to lower the density slider a bit because it's very freaking dense. Guys, this is this is Metro Tokyo. There are it's a freaking concrete jungle. There's stuff everywhere, but it looks amazing. What I've seen so far, this looks incredible. This has probably gotta be their uh, they're Mona Lisa, and by they, I mean Union Workshop, the developers of all their roots. Because uh, this, this looks damn good around here. It almost looks like a different game. It's like one of those, you know, kind of like the Taurus Mountains route, the, the Turkish route, and stuff like that. It's just, it's on another level. It, it looks very nice. Now, with a lot of Union Workshop stuff, you'll notice this immediate kind of blue haze around the world if you get up too high. Uh, and while in some other add-ons... That was kind of gnarly, you know. It, it didn't look all that great. But on this, you're in Tokyo. So, you know, you're not going to be up that high ever. You're not going to see anything beyond, uh, you know, a row of old buildings to your left or your right or in front or behind you. Because at this level, this shit looks incredible. This is a very, very nice looking roof from what I've seen so far. It just looks really good. But if you get up here and start looking around, yeah, it's going to look kind of weird. Because it doesn't matter. This shit out here does not matter. You're not going to see this anyway. Unless you're getting up high trying to take some, you know, action shots. Or, I don't know, maybe you like controlling trains from 7,000 feet. Whatever. You know, to each their own. As usual. But, you know, down here where it matters, it looks damn good. Now, it is a bit heavy. Like I said, I tried a scenario. Just I chose a random scenario. It was fairly heavy. It just so happened to be in Ueno, which is uh, basically downtown Tokyo. Um, and it was heading north. So what's funky is I know we're dragging it out here. We'll look at the trains here in a minute. Um, so when you're here, if, you, if you're here and you, and you change cameras and get out and look around anywhere down towards like the station, if you turn around and look at the station itself, I have never seen frame rates so bad on anything. And I'm, I'm not even, you know, I'm not even bullshitting you, like, for serious. But if you look in any other direction, it's smooth. It's plus 20. I was actually surprised looking in other directions, even with trains passing, all that good stuff. So something else I did, which I would like to note, is I turned the flares off within uh, the game settings because... For whatever reason, developers have been using these old-ass flares, which, of course, are headlight flares, which look terrible forever. 
I don't know if they just don't want to take the time to make new ones, but they just don't look good. It looks like a friggin' Michael Bay movie with special effects or something. It just looks like ass. It doesn't look very good. You know, it needs to be modernized. There have been modding developers that have uh, made very good-looking headlights and flares. Uh, so it can be done. It's just, you know, do they want to take the time to do it? Probably not. So the other issue with that is the flares and the, the headlights is your shadow casting, which murders, bludgeons to death your frame rate. It's horrible. So I went in the settings and I turned those off. Now, you won't have the big stupid flares that you can see from like seven miles away, sure. But these being uh, newer uh, multiple units, you can still kind of see the lights if I'm not mistaken. So let's go ahead and click on this cat right here. So I've got the flares off. You can see you can see the tails, right? The tails are on. So let's go ahead and throw the reverser. Nope. Get get out of get out of here. There we go. Let's throw the reverser forwards. And the headlights come on automatically. As you can see, they are light emitting diode LED. The lights are there. That's all you need, dude. You don't need those big ass flares that are like, you know drilling holes into your freaking frontal cortex, you know, with with laser light. You don't need all that shit. Plus it looks bad. This looks totally fine right here. So that's good that there's actual little graphical things like that that happen if you turn the flares off. But anyway, the reason I'm bringing that up is you turn the flares off, you're going to gain uh, FPS right off the bat. So I did that. Uh, but like I said, I've got everything maxed out like graphics wise because I'm, you know, I'm just crazy like that. I like to see what certain, you know, add ons and stuff like that can handle as far as, uh, you know, settings. But. That being said, there are some areas that are bad, but a lot of a lot of the area that you go through has is, is been fine for me. It's been totally, totally smooth. So anyway, let's check this thing out. The 1000 series, you can still see the light on the ground as well. 1000 series, I like how they're color coded. That's kind of how you know a difference between the line that you're going to be going on, uh, the type of train that it is. Uh, so on and so forth, which is really neat about, uh, you know, these Japanese trains, these metro trains. But, um, yeah, it is missing the JR East um, or JR branding patch there, which would go right there. I think there's a couple other things along the side possibly, but it's, you know, like I said, it's not the end of the friggin' world. You know, it's no big deal. Um, your information destination up there uh, should work. I don't know if it will because it's in quick drive, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. I jotted down the controls, which are in the manual, so that's all you got to do. Go and look at the manual. Uh, destination, letters I and O. Yeah, it might not work unless you're in a scenario, so we'll have to work in a, in a scenario and, and check it out. No, that's not working. And then you can change the train class, which type of train it is, which is all covered in the manual with E and F. There we go. Party. Okay, so this is uh, E and F keys. It's kind of like tweaking out here. Extra. Party. Party! Ofuna. And then, okay, so I'm an idiot. So once you do that, once you once you set the train class, then you can change the destination. So it's, uh, I think, are these dot matrix? If they're not, please correct me um, in the comments as always. But uh, they look like they are, possibly. Uh, they may just be LED. Um, but they uh, they look good. It's color-coded. You can see the, the letters on there and the, uh, the Japanese, which, of course, I cannot read at all. Uh, I can hardly read English, but uh, those look good. So you can change those. They are there, um, and they are not missing, which is always a nice, nice touch. You've got your train unit number there, of course. And uh, let's just look at a train. So these are stainless steel car bodies. They look pretty good. They look about on par. You can see the uh, destination and, and train on the side there as well. They look pretty on par for a union workshop. I don't think their their models have ever looked bad by any means um you know they've always looked fairly decent uh oh and one thing i should notate is when i was putting these down in the editor i'm certain i don't have the correct train set 
number down so you know there may be some issues with that but their models have always looked pretty good you know nothing nothing over the top but definitely nothing crummy either um they've they've definitely looked good over the years but uh yeah it's it's an emu i mean there's nothing too too crazy about it it's got some fairly nice detail underneath as well uh, so they didn't skimp down here like a lot of stuff you may see on the Steam store. Uh, the bogies and axles and all that actually look pretty nice as well as the uh, suspension system. You've got your cabling and all that. That looks really good. I mean, look at the, the flap here. That looks nice. This looks pretty nice. This looks pretty, pretty nice. And this is the ass end, of course with uh, the tails on and all that. So let's hop in. This is where the juicy shit is right here, guys. Look at the interior on this some bitch, my guys. This looks good. This looks really good. This is uh they're getting better. These devs. They are very much getting better. Um the Shinkansen look pretty good, the Tohoku mainline. And I feel like they kind of built off that. So you can see they are starting to update some of their stuff. Uh, while the exterior, I feel, kind of looks largely the same, just model and texture-wise, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, the interior does look different. They have they have stepped some stuff up in the interior department. It does look pretty damn good in here. Uh, I will say, and just look at that view, man. Freaking big-ass windshield. Just very cool, all these uh, displays and all that good stuff. All right, let's try and figure this out here. So, on the left-hand side, we've got our Mon screen, or I guess it's short for monitor. We'll go over what all those are in just a moment. On the right is your Tim's screen, which is just uh, information about the train itself, obviously. This little light here in the middle is your door light. So if that is blinking, um, the doors are closed. If it is extinguished, they're open. I'm pretty sure that's how it is. And then, of course, being Japan, they are very serious about their timetabling. Uh, so you've got your stopwatch down there, of course. This is the emergency brake button there. Let's see, what else can we go over? This is your power handle, your combined power and brake handle. This is your reverser. Over here, you've got your key. Let's see, I think that's a Z key. Yeah, so you can tell it's on by turning the light on there. You can see overhead. So that is on. Uh, do these windows open? No, it would appear they don't. That sucks. That'd be cool if the windows open. Uh, yeah, they don't. And you cannot look any farther, which is fine. You know, they, they save performance there by not being able to look around. I don't really give a crap. You don't need to see anything on the back wall anyway. Um, so, so no deal breaker there. Um, let's see what else we got here. It's a constant speed control, which is like a cruise control in your car. Um... Let's see, so we'll start going over this right here. So what's going on here on this screen? The uh, the top left one, the top left dial, that is your low voltage voltimeter. Uh, the one next to that that says KV, that is your high voltage voltimeter. Uh, I have no friggin' clue what all the little, uh, the little, you know, tiny squares in the top right hand say. But one of those, uh, I think the second from the right is your constant speed display, so that'll be illuminated or extinguished. Uh, you've got two little buttons above, well not buttons, indications, above the yellow there. That is your uh, emergency brake status, and that is currently lit, as you can see. Uh, the yellow bars are your brake notches, so you can see um, you know, where you're at with the, the brake handle, of course. The one in the middle with the gray that's kind of about halfway filled, that's your actual brake cylinder gauge. It's, well, it's not a gauge, it's a readout. And then the one right next to that that says MR, that's your main reservoir. So all braking, of course. Uh, the dial, bottom right, is obviously the speedometer. Now there's a black, a distinct black line that goes across it. Um, that is your ATC speed, so that's your allowable speed. And some of the safety systems on these things are actually curved. So they'll, 
you know, it'll start backing off and you'll have to, to match the speed or it'll, you know, lengthen and you can go faster. It's almost just like ATC uh, in the States. I'm, I'm sure it's auto train control. I think it is anyway. Um, but anyway, the uh, there's a little uh, thing above that gauge there, that little square right above where the, uh, the green arrow is. That is your uh, ATC speed pattern curve approach. So that lets you know if there is going to be a, a different kind of ATC uh, speed pattern coming up there. Uh, let's see what else. On the bottom, so the, the little uh, doohickey below the speedo gauge there, that is your shunting control. So when that's illuminated, you're in shunt mode. Uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? I think that pretty much covers everything with that screen. The screen on the right, there's only a few things you really need to know with this. This is the Tim screen. There's obviously the clock, the time of day and all that, and the uh, digital speed readout. You've got your train ID, which is uh, 3223F. You can see in green there. Uh, so there's normally two lines here. We are not on the line. So in this light gray section in the very middle, uh, that's actually it actually shows the stations. It's kind of cool. It actually shows the stations and the direction that the train is traveling, uh, what your final destination is, and all that good stuff. Of course, you have to read Japanese, which I can't. But just knowing that it's there is, is very cool. Of course, you've got your train readout there. That has got the status of your doors uh, and the power car. So it'll show you if doors are open, if doors are closed. It'll show you if the train is under power or it is um, giving back power to the overhead line by braking uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, on the bottom right, one of those two lights on the bottom right, um, or buttons, they're not buttons, Jesus Christ, I keep saying buttons, that's your error message, so if that's lit, you've got an error, you're going to need to clear that, uh, what else, I think that pretty much covers that screen, I can't really think of too much else, so what you'll need to do to get moving in most cases uh, the e-brake is going to be set. You can see these lights over here on the dash. These are your e-brake buttons. Uh, and over here you've got your, you know, lights, cab lights, all that general crap. And then there's the, uh, the ATS clear, um, which is generally the Q button. And it is in this case as well. That is the actual physical location of the button there. So that clears the ATS. Uh, if you've got any kind of, you know, speed reduction going on or anything like that. So to get this thing to move... You're going to need to put the reverser in neutral. You're going to need to put the combined power and brake into emergency, or it should go in there. It's kind of tweaking out right now. Um, and then you should you should be able to clear the emergency brakes. So once those are both, uh, once they're in neutral and emergency brake on the, the power thingy, you hold down the uh, e-brake reset button over here, and that should extinguish... There you go. It just did. And then you should be able to move, although I still see the light up there, so I don't know what's going on with that. So we'll go ahead and throw it back forwards and see if it'll let us move before we get any further here. Oh, yes, it does. All right. So that being said, it's got two horns as well. It's got an air horn and an electronic horn. So these are neat. Um, I think the air horn is the end key. I mean, it kind of sounds similar. That's kind of what they sound like. I've, you know, I've seen plenty of YouTube of these things. As much as there is, anyway. I feel like there's not a whole lot. It's just down to your search parameters, naturally. And I don't type in Japanese, so... That's the air horn. Uh, the electric one is space. It just sounds like a little car horn or something. Um... Yeah, they're you know they're horns. They're not they're not the greatest horns, but they don't they don't use them really you know unless they absolutely have to. So you can see bits moving down there as well. This thing is actually fairly detailed. Uh, not to disservice anything about it, um, you know them not stepping up like modeling and texturing department. There are some very nice things about these models, which is very cool. Uh, this being one of them here. But we'll go up the line here as far as it'll let us, and we'll just listen to it for a minute, see what it sounds like. It's very quiet. These things aren't super loud in real life either. 
the physics feel kind of weird when you put it in a in a new acceleration notch it kind of does that that quick jerk thing where it like lurches forward all right we're gonna break you can see the uh, the speed thing there is actually going down the little green arrow telling you where you can be can hear some joint noises the thing is pretty freaking quiet this thing is pretty freaking quiet then we'll break Ooh, yeah it just it's the, the physics aren't the greatest they're not the greatest they could be a little smoother you know just just to be uh, crystal clear, it's shaking a little bit. It's kind of funky. I'm certain I didn't place the uh, train set down correctly. Something about that doesn't look right. All right, we're stopped. Let's try and open the doors. Yeah, it's got kind of a nice sound. It sounds a little generic, but, you know, I don't personally give us the flying about stuff like that if I'm honest uh, you know I don't spend much time hanging out on the platform and all that you know what I mean it's just like being in a cab so this is the interior shot of this sucker so this is more a metro style you'll see with the 3000 series which we're going to take a look at in a minute it's totally different to how this one looks it looks pretty damn good in here it does look very nice the uh, the the people models are interesting you got this guy who looks like he jumped straight out of Final Fantasy 85 um, you know I, this, this cat over here looks possibly new I love all the ads up there this looks pretty cool in here this does look pretty cool you can move around, of course, a bit. You can stand up as well. Espresso. Mm, that sounds good. I might need one of those here in a minute. So, yeah, this is the interior. Um, all right, let's go back and check out the 3000. All right, the 3000. Let's go ahead and click on it here. It's probably going to have the same stuff. We'll test the horn. Yeah, it does. All right. We'll leave it. Uh, where it's currently at so we can release the emergency brake so it's in neutral power handles and emergency brake you're just gonna need to release it electronically with the button here hold it down for as long as it takes when it extinguishes your gravy man you can go so we're gonna go ahead and throw it forwards here we'll go ahead and take a look at the inside of this thing while we're at it I thought this one was slightly different um, I thought this one had different seating Am I losing my friggin' mind? It's already lost. Um, can you not go in the first class section? Uh, what the frig, man? I want to go in here, dude. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can't go in those. That's that's what I was referring to. So this looks largely the same as well, of course, when you don't get in the first class section. Maybe it's not modeled. Oh, well, not the end of the world. So this one's largely going to be the same as the 1000 series, of course, except for the bi-level section, which looks pretty nice. Very appropriate, realistic. It's uh, it's interesting seeing these things. It, it's, it's like two different kinds of trains mashed together. It's funky. It's, uh, it's neat, too. All right, let's hop in. It's probably going to sound and feel largely the same. We'll... We'll go up here as well, but we'll do an exterior run here and just listen to it, so. Oh, very nice. Did you hear the brake release? Like the, uh, um, sounds like the M7. Metro North M7. We'll listen to that again. Hopefully it's loud enough. Everything's a bit quiet. Hell yeah! All right, brakes sound good. I like that. Now this thing has a notable sound when it accelerates. They're not loud, but they do have a definitive sound to them. So I'll try and shut up for a moment. And we'll listen.
Nice flange noise. Enjoy. And we'll break. Nice slight squeak upon breaking. Um, they sound pretty similar to the real thing. Now I've never ridden on one, uh, so all I can you know relate to are uh, YouTube videos and things of that nature. Um, but uh, you know, overall they're they're nice. Like visually, I think they definitely look great. Um, sounds. They're, they're definitely upper mid. Uh, physics could be better. They could feel a bit heavier instead of doing that lurching thing. Um, but anyway, that's the rolling stock. The 1000 and the 3000 series. Hopefully we'll have an expansion with the uh, the older one that's back there, which is currently AI only. Uh, and you probably noticed as soon as we started getting in the station here, it started lagging a bit. Uh, and that just uh, that's just all part of the package, sadly. As you can see, it's... It's fairly detailed in the stations. There's ads, machines, snack bars, uh, lots of people, you know, seats, all kinds of good stuff. Um, this weird lady who's morphed into the stairs. Someone may need to call an ambulance, but it looks pretty good. And, uh, you know, some of the stations, the frames do tend to kind of dip down some, especially Ueno Station. But uh, we'll get into looking at the route overall. And it is a gem. It looks really damn good. So we'll get to uh, looking at the route here next. Alrighty, so we're going to take a look at the route now. This is Ueno Station. I'll show you where we're at on the map. And it's set to... There we go. Go northbound. And that's probably the best experience you're going to have so far with it being kind of heavy. From what I've seen so far, and I haven't messed around too much, this station is supremely heavy. Uh, this is basically downtown Metro Tokyo. Um, over here, there's like a big, uh, big park, uh, a zoo, all kinds of stuff, a, a national uh, historical museum. Over here is the... Uh, the Tokyo Sky Tree, I think it's called, which was like the tallest structure uh, in the world, or no, not in the world, in Japan, I think, in like 2010. That might have changed so far. But this is a quick drive as well that I loaded in. It's already fairly busy. I've seen several trains come and go, but as soon as you see, you turn and, and look towards Ueno Station, it just drops down. I've never seen something so low. It's a nice-looking station. Uh, there's, there's just... You know, nice signage. The platforms look great. There's there's people everywhere. There's advertisements, and there's actually a lower station as well below. Uh, but we're just going to go down the line and uh, just take a look around and, and drive this thing and see how we do. So we're currently pulling away from the station. You can already see it's smoothed out big time. Like it's it's 20 FPS right now. You got to keep in mind as well. I've got the aliasing maxed out. Like, graphically, I've got everything as high as it can possibly go uh, within the game settings, Railworks Enhancer and all that. But uh, what a view looking out of this thing. The, uh, the windscreen is massive. Just an excellent view. And it looks fantastic. Yeah, like I was mentioning earlier, the distant scenery, it's not even necessary because you don't see it. You know, you're in a, a concrete jungle. And uh, the sun visors work as well, if you'd like to pop them down. I don't think that one will. It does not. We'll hop out here and take a look. See, we're looking back towards Ueno. The frames are... <laughs> you look this way, immediately smooths out. Here's part of the underground line that comes from the station down there. 
is pretty neat. It's the big curve. There's the uh, sky tree back there, which, uh, you know, they faithfully recreated. It looks pretty legit. Uh, but this area looks great. I think they've updated some of the trackage. You see these kind of fat ties, uh, but the ballast looks like it's been freshened up some. This concrete texture looks really good as well. Uh, but there's some different ties. Let's see if I can find them here. Some, like, thinner ones. These here. But it looks freshened up. It looks different compared to their other roots. Uh, there is, you know, some of the older grass and foliage in here. Um, you know, but it works. It looks good to me. Um, you know, the countryside, they've got all the cherry blossoms and all that, which looks very, you know, lovingly done, of course. Uh, but this is a city. You know, it's just going to be a bunch of weeds and whatnot. The uh, Kenton area looks really good and the overhead line equipment. Uh, I think some of this is new or has been freshened up as well. Uh, it's not like the thickest 3D model, but it looks nice overall, including the actual line itself, the overhead line. Along with the railing, all the safety equipment. Uh, you'll see those yellow rails here and there. Of course, the signals look nice. They're very visible and bright. Here's one of the first stations you come across here. Again, this is a quick drive. Got another train going southbound. It's very colorful through here. Um, you know, obviously a lot of the buildings and houses were reused, uh, and, and they are of lower texture, which is okay. You know, it, it saves performance, but it's nice seeing the, uh, the advertisements and all that stuff. Um, you know, it looks, uh, it looks, it looks pretty spot on. It looks pretty good. There goes another train. That is actually the AI only train. I love the way these things look. Uh, I hope we get uh, the actual deal here with that one. So that's another train going past. Another big station. I don't know what all the dang stations are called uh, to a T, but uh, they look pretty good. So there's something going on with the actual stations themselves, because as you can see, we're hovering over the station and the frame kind of tanks a little bit. So it's it's something to do with the stations. I'm going to take a stab at the lighting. It's probably got something to do with the platform lighting. Uh, I don't know. The, just the, the way that they cast. I know, you know, lighting can be very tanky in, uh, in Train Some Classic. This is one of the, uh, the metro stations here. It's got the safety doors, which look cool. Very neat. Got signs everywhere. And it's like, you know, legit stuff. The Yamanote line. It's not just uh, generic, if you will. But some of the scenes off this line, man, just looking out that way. This looks really incredible. Uh, as soon as I started looking around in the editor, I was just like, wow, this is this, the same group that's made several routes that kind of started looking very samey over the years. But this is like on another level. This looks really good. And for it to be Metro freaking Tokyo. Like, that couldn't have been easy, you know, to, to get a, a decent frame rate out of it. Um, there's another train. Again, this is a quick drive. I'm going to keep saying it just so you know. Like, you, you can do the, the player-only train quick drive if you like. Um, but good Lord, man, it's, it's, it's thick around here. And you'll see all kinds of little cutesy anime-type stuff. In fact, if you do scenarios... Uh, that when you first load up, it'll have like a little anime character, um, you know, giving you instructions or whatnot. And there's, uh, there's apparently uh, announcements in the scenarios as well. And I think on the 1000 series, which is the one that we're in and not the 3000 series, which is the express train. But uh, good Lord. It is thick. This is one of the main yards here. Jeez, I cannot remember the name of it. It's probably on the map. We'll take a look at the map. Ah, uh, Oku, and then this other one here, this is the Shinkansen uh, yard, where the high-speed trains are stabled. That one is uh, Oku? No, Tabata. Tabata. This one here is Oku, that's the one we were just on. Yes, yeah, so that's Tabata. And there's still just trains everywhere. There's one over there. There's one coming this way. That's ours. Back there somewhere. Uh, it's It's very busy, and it looks very nice. I mean, compared to a lot of the the very deep uh, kind of inner city metro stuff that they've done 
um, in the past, I, I feel like this is a step up. It is just a freaking tangle of steel. I mean, just look at the, the tracks everywhere. Every which way you look, every which way you go. This just looks very, very nice. So we're just cruising along here, as you can see, and I just got popped by uh, one of the safety systems. But this is relatively smooth. I'm getting about 23 to 25 FPS, and it kind of jumps. And it's typically where there's a large station, uh, per se. I mean, there's a ton of tracks right here, and it's all overhead line. Um, and a lot of overhead line in train sim seems to always tank frames a bit but it doesn't really seem to do the case here i mean there's this absolutely chungus yard to our left and i'm still getting 25 fps uh but it's it's very smooth and it's a very nice uh just visual experience uh cruising through here there is surprisingly a level crossing on this absolute insanity of uh network of rails it's uh it's crazy to see a level crossing like this but it looks pretty good pretty faithful uh the laying of the road over the tracks looks really really nice um the the groundwork overall the texture of the ground and the ballast especially look really really nice i love the color of that it's just got that kind of you know dingy gray look um <laughs> It's just a damn good looking route. These uh these guys are you know, as far as route building, they have definitely stepped it up some. And I like we are not in the uh the commuter. We are in the express. Um we're not stopping at any stations, we're going straight to Saitama, which is uh just almost the end of the route. Uh, and it's still very smooth. Hopefully you can see the frame counter up there. I'm flirting with thirty right now. And it looks really good and it's just train after train after train there goes one of the ones we're in now with the cool uh, double deckers there in the middle but it's just a really really good looking route the sounds you know could definitely be better with the multiple units they're you know they're they're in the right zone uh they got the right idea it's just missing you know the the things that i recall from these the most are there's like a, a definite audible whine kind of like mid acceleration pulling away from the platform you don't really hear that too much and then there's also this funky like breaking sound that's like these little chirps uh from in the cab when when coming to a, a station stop um but it's you know the 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 track noise sounds okay the flange squeal sounds okay um it's got you know it's got the okay brake release uh leaving the platform and you know, the traction motor whine is, is there, but these things aren't super loud to begin with. So it's, uh, we got three trains right here. Look at this, man. Quick drive. Yeah, it's a quick drive. It's probably like the 13th time I've said it. Um, it's good, and it's, it's still pretty busy, and I'm getting a really smooth experience here. I only wish I could get the same from something, say, like Long Island Railroad. We are now coming up on probably the most sizable and only real water crossing uh, on the entire bit of the route. There's actually a river to uh, the south here that we have already crossed. I think it's called the Shakuji, uh, but it actually was like dug underneath uh, a bit of the city and the town and the track, so you don't see it. But this uh, first one here, this little tiny, uh, these are two separate rivers, is the... Um, Jeez, Shingashi, I think, and the big one over there is the Arikawa. Now, you will note, just like a lot of other Union Workshop routes, it's got that funky watercolor. Um, again, I'm, I've never been a fan of the water in Train Sim anyway, and there's not much in lieu of, you know, the, the ground textures. And, you know, it doesn't look... You know, for, for what they were angling for, for straight performance, this is very doable because, again, you're not going to be seeing this stuff. So I've got it paused. I'll unpause it. We'll get in the cab. I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, from this angle, this looks incredible.
It's part of the uh, line that's got the max track speed. We're close to it, 120 kmh. So that's like 75 mile an hour, yeah. Got another train coming. And there's another one behind that. This is Tokyo. It's busy. And just as an example, uh, talking about the foliage and a lot of it largely being old Kuju foliage, uh, you know, there's still some nice pieces in there. They have definitely um, chosen 2D trees, uh, you know, where it can be meshed in with 3D trackside. And it looks okay. It looks okay to me anyway. I personally don't mind. But even the bush and the grass and all the weeds growing down here look look very nice. They've, you know, they've chosen some of the better uh, old school, um, you know, bits of the foliage loft, but this to me just it, this fits. This looks really nice. This here is uh, Minama Urawa Dincha Depot, and as you can see, they're still, you know, it's it's midday, so you know it's not going to be too busy. But in a quick drive, there is a uh, a cold and dark unit sat in the depot here. How neat is that? And to reiterate again, it's uh, when it comes to the performance, I'm having a pretty decent time, except when you get in stations and you are in the thick of the station, the frames tank quite a bit. Uh, I don't know what could be causing it. I'm going to assume the lights, but of course these places are very well lit with a lot of lights. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, I don't know if that can be saved, if they can be fixed it would be fantastic if the devs could you know maybe do something to alleviate the issue some because uh, I'm getting about 10 FPS now and uh, it's not that great but as soon as you turn around and look towards the future it ups quite a bit and we'll leave the station and I'm back up to almost 30 frames per second silky smooth I mean and this is with a, an absolute F ton of trains I won't say it, because uh, you're, you're probably already oh, very aware that I'm using quick drive. But there's, there's a lot of activity for uh, quick drive. But this here is the general experience. So we're just going to ride out the rest of this run into uh, Saitama Shintoshin. Uh, we're currently on line four. I'm sure I didn't set it up absolutely correct, nor did I with the... Uh, the information display there you can see the frame tank as we went past that station there I don't know what's going on with that because this is this is kind of abnormally smooth for train sim actually operating the train at, at this speed <laughs> it's it's weird there's no hitching there's no stuttering it's uh they they've done something unique uh building building this route it's uh you know, for what it is, uh, by and large, it's very smooth and it's a pleasurable experience. Uh, you get, you know, you get two units. Uh, you get a third that's AI, which should have an expansion here soon. Uh, the sounds are okay. The units themselves look great. They have, uh, you know, a little bit of functionality. Um, the physics could be better. If, you know, if, if I had to, to have one little qualm about something, it'd probably be the physics and the way, you know, the braking and acceleration just kind of lurch forward and back with very much gusto um you know but other than that I, th I think the route looks fantastic this reminds me of some of the the really really damn good european stuff that you see out there uh you know between germany and romania uh you know some of the dutch stuff um this this looks really good this looks really really good so we'll just go ahead and ride this into the station here I'm sure I have it absolutely incorrect as far as the line and the train, but the good thing is they've got a very, very detailed manual that explains every bit of that. Everything you need to know to set a train up properly, as I uh, have not done, and as you can see me e-braking here, um, you know, to, to do what you need to do. But it uh, comes with quite a few scenarios as well, and I'm not going to mess with those because they, you know, they're not that great on... 
you know, performance from the little bit that I've seen. But if they're as busy as these quick drives, they got to be just as well, um, you know, smooth wise. Because uh, this this is very nice. So this is um, this is Saitama. This is the uh, Saitama Super Arena right here. Second largest in the world as far as capacity. They hold all kind of events there. It's a uh, fairly fairly large urban area outskirts of uh, Tokyo, obviously. And the end of the line is actually down there as well as a uh, another depot down here. And then it just dead ends into nowhere. But it's, uh, it's a nice, nice little line. Uh, it's very busy. You know, it's not terribly long. But, um, you know, they... You know they they put some care into building this, and you can tell it looks uh, it looks really good to me. Someone who's got a very keen eye um, for Japan, or you know Tokyo modernity and in, in the metro area will probably uh, see some things and figure out some things. But overall, for thirty bucks, I would I would absolutely recommend this. Uh, if anything, if you're worried about performance, you can always you know turn the the uh, you know the aspect down as far as the scenery density i'm not sure what all that will remove uh but you can play around with that and there's always the old two hour steam trial if it doesn't work out just refund it but uh i dig it this this is a i've been waiting for something like this because i love him some metro and uh you know this kind of stuff to me is is golden so this is tokyo commuter again out now 30 bucks i'll link it down below where you can find it if you want to check it out but uh, that's it for now, guys. I hope you found this somewhat informative. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Take care, guys. Bye.